Hello, hello everyone. Good afternoon. Um, thank you for taking part to this presentation. Uh, my name is Galem Caillou, and I'm a product manager for IoT at Canonical, the company behind Ubuntu. And today I'm going to talk about edge infrastructure for uh, IoT at the edge. So we're going to talk about uh, bootstrapping uh, infrastructure. Uh, with open source software. So open source stacks for running IoT uh, ID, and AI at the edge. So today, the emergence of uh, AI and IoT are the opportunity really to embed logic and, and intelligence into our environment. And uh, it's kind of a revolution because for the first time, will be able to make uh, intelligent uh, artifacts. So it's kind of, kind of a big deal. So we at, at Canonical, we are on a mission to accelerate that revolution. And uh, the way we intend to accelerate that revolution is by giving developers the means to innovate at the intersection of uh, IoT and AI. So, uh, today, in, uh, in the talk, I'm going to start uh, by uh, telling you a, li a little bit about the company because uh, most developers, uh, most innovators know Ubuntu, but they don't know the organization and the company behind it. And uh, after a short introduction, I'm going to tell you about the, the challenges that uh, innovators meet at the crossroads of AI and, uh, and, and IoT. And uh, then we're going to talk about how to address these challenges with open source uh, softwares and tools. So uh, let's start. About Canonical, uh, well, we're a global company of about uh, 600 employees worldwide, uh, distributed in 30 countries on all continents, really. Uh, and uh, we have uh, six offices, uh, seven offices worldwide. Uh, the company was uh, founded uh, in 2004, so we're 15 years old, and uh, we're on a mission to empower innovators with open source, with open source software. So uh, a lot of uh, the innovators uh, that you see in this slide have started their, 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 their project in a, in a garage running on Ubuntu, or they are delivering software worldwide to millions of people every day uh, on Ubuntu. So we are very proud of that. And uh, today our product, the portfolio of our products and solutions ranges from uh, the cloud, obviously, uh, public clouds, private clouds, where we have uh, a large uh, penetration. Uh, we enjoy a lot of popularity with developers there, but also increasingly, Ubuntu uh, is increasingly being uh, adopted uh, in the IoT edge uh, segment. And this is something that we, we're driving in partnership with uh, the big silicon manufacturers and uh, innovat innovators, uh, innovative OEMs. And um, one of the real challenges um, that we are addressing uh, is uh, AIoT, so uh, the intersection of AI and, uh, and IoT, which is really hard. It's really hard because it touches uh, cyber physical systems. So it's really at the intersection of the logical and the, the physical world. So realizing the potential of uh, intelligent connected uh, application will require a lot of effort, which will translate uh, in a lot of, of capital. Why? Because it's, it's knowledge intensive, uh, for one. It requires a mixed uh, set of skills, so, uh, and uh, a lot of the, 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 the grouping, the intersection of uh, many uh, technical dis disciplines that have to be knowledge, knowledge from many sources has to be aggregated in order to de de develop this application, which makes them hard. Then uh, the workflows are really complex. They're extensive, so there are many types of different tasks that have to be 
uh, carried out by different uh, type of uh, people, and within the, 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 the task, the complex, there's also a, a, a high degree of complexity. So the workflows are really uh, extensive, and we're gonna come back to that uh, later. And uh, the workloads involved are also varied. So uh, not only in uh, the type of work workloads, but also in the type of infrastructure. So AI IoT will require different type of, um, of compute. So uh, big high hyperscale servers, uh, PCs, gateways, and uh, embedded devices. So there's many uh, dimension of complexity uh, that has to be uh, managed, which makes it really hard uh, to innovate uh, in this segment. Let's deep dive a little bit on, on the different challenges. So multidisciplinarity. So involved in uh, the development of such solutions are data scientists who uh, uh, take care of uh, developing uh, the, the data pipeline, ingesting the data, processing the data, training the models. And then there are the software engineers who will integrate the models into applications and deploy them, maintain them, update them. Um, and then there's also uh, some managers that have to be involved in order to track the business objectives and to communicate with different stakeholders. So we see that AIML is really a collaborative, multidisciplinary uh, effort. So this is one, one dimension of complexity. So the other uh, is the diversity of workloads uh, involved, as we've mentioned. So we see that there are different compute form factors that are involved, uh, data centers that will usually uh, store the data, uh, offer basic services as uh, storage, networking, uh, orchestration, but also uh, offer the possibility to do an analytics at a large scale and model training. So the, uh, sometimes the edge, get, edge gateways in the middle that do the aggregation and the monitoring uh, of, uh, of uh, uh, nodes, of uh, endpoints, and then obviously there are the, the endpoints that uh, serve uh, sen sensing and, and inferences. So the other dimension of complexity is the diversity of workloads involved. And then there are the workflows, which end-to-end uh, -end machine learning workflows are, are really complex because there's a data pipeline that has to be built, collecting the data, ingesting it from different sources, storing it for, for further processing. And then when the data is gathered, uh, it needs to be explored with visualization tools uh, and analyzed, uh, the, the attributes have to be identified, and then data scientists have to prepare the data, cleaning it, uh, transforming it, uh, creating the transformation pipelines before actually doing the machine learning. So this will involve uh, creating models, forming hypotheses, uh, doing feature engineering, selecting a model, and then tr actually training this model, distributing the, the training task on the infrastructure, if there's GPUs and CPUs, uh, and evaluating the performance. And then the, the model has to be cross-validated. The hyperparameters have to be fine-tuned. And when uh, satisfactory results are achieved, the model is deployed, integrated in uh, applications and uh, delivered, delivered to the field and uh, this application will be served um, and perform and for, for instance, transfer data back to the, to, to the server, to the data center for further training. And uh, in the whole process of, of operation, the performance will be me measured uh, and the quality of input will be measured, especially in the case of uh, all online learning. So it's really a complex uh, a process, a complex workflows that involve a lot of people, runs on different type of, of, of workloads, and uh, can be summed up. Uh, the, the three main levels that can be identified, the data processing analytics, the, the machine learning uh, experiments, and uh, operations, model operations, and, and, and maintenance. So very complex stuff. So now, how do we help? How do we as an organization 
that is said to help uh, developers, to empower developers to innovate. How do we want to help there? So the challenge is, is, is that uh, in the face of this complexity, it's really hard to get started. It's really hard to developers to start experimenting. And even when they're, they're ready to start, there's so many software that uh, uh, they, they, they could, it could be hard to, to, to evaluate, to discover, evaluate, and, and pick the right options. And even when the object, options are picked, there's complexity of the deployments. It's really hard to deploy these things. And we, we want to help by offering uh, open source uh, options in order to cheer down the barriers of, uh, of, of development, of experimentation. Uh, for the, in face of the variety of, of so software, we curate, we find the latest and greatest, the best one, we bundle them and uh, package them and deliver uh, them to developers. And for the deployment, we really simplify the deployment of open source uh, AI ML tools uh, and services, as we'll see in the next sections. So let's look at what our open source software stack for Edge uh, AI looks like. So we've mentioned the workflow. So the first level involves data, uh, data collection, data processing, and for that, to meet the, the requirements of, of that level, we've packaged uh, OpenStack, we've repackaged OpenStack, we've made it uh, streamlined and optimized for deployment uh, at the edge on workstations or even uh, IoT devices. So uh, MicroStack is a, is a streamlined, op optimized version of OpenStack that provides the, the basic infrastructure as a service, uh, infrastructure service as compute storage management, but uh, in a compact way, in a, in a, a way that is optimized to run on uh, less powerful devices, commercial of the, the shelf devices. So on the second le level, we offer Kubeflow again, but not on the classical Kubernetes, in also a simplified version of Kubernetes called MicroKids. So MicroKids is just as powerful as a classic uh, Kubernetes, uh, but it's much more easier to deploy. So it will offer the same portability, the same scalability of um, machine learning uh, workflows on Kubernetes, the same services like Jupyter Notebooks, uh, pipelines, TensorFlow, et cetera. So the same thing, but susceptible to be run even on the, uh, on the Raspberry Pi. And on the lower level, the application level, we uh, propose Ubuntu Core, which is a version of Ubuntu optimized for the requirements of IoT. It's the streamlined, simplified version of Ubuntu that is cloud native, secure, and most importantly, easy to update, which is very important for machine learning, where the model, the performance of the model has to be monitored and con con constantly updated. And uh, in order to deploy uh, containerized uh, cloud native application on embedded system, uh, there is a SnapCrab, which is a developer tool for deploying containerized uh, microservices on embedded systems and enables to, to use a cloud-native approach to embedded development with containers, microservices, DevOps, CI, CDs, and most importantly, uh, it makes uh, Ubuntu core and AI ML models very easy to update and also to roll back in case uh, of, 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 of failure or in case the model doesn't perform well, which is uh, critical uh, sometimes for machine learning. So, Let's deep dive a little bit on the tools. I talk about some simplicity. So how simple is, that, is it to deploy a cloud at the edge or on any workstation or even uh, on a laptop? We've made it really simple. So here you see that with MicroStack, you can build a, a pass, a platform as a service for, to perform data storage and analytics at the edge in all, only four commands. So uh, very simple, you can uh, install a MicroStack OpenStack in the snap, and uh, it will uh, deliver 
uh, the, the classic uh, client of, of OpenStack uh, that you can see in the second command, run any, uh, or any OpenStack command. It allows to uh, configure OpenStack automatically, as you will see in the, trick, the, the, the third command, and uh, to launch any OpenStack service like Glance, Horizon, uh, Keystone, Nova, etc. So in four commands, four simple commands, it's really possible to deploy a cloud, to create your own cloud, to perform machine learning uh, uh, tasks, even, even on, on a notebook, which is the simplification that we'll talk about now. Let's look at, at Kubeflow. How easy to, is it to, to deploy Kubeflow? So we've, make it, we've made it very easy. Uh, so it's possible to deploy an end-to-end -end, uh, machine learning workflow at the end in two commands. So the first command will in install Kubernetes, a compact version of Kubernetes, uh, simplified. And in the second command, you can install Kubeflow and enable GPU for accelerated workloads uh, using uh, NVIDIA runtime, for instance. So very simple. And uh, now let's talk about Ubuntu Core. So Ubuntu Core makes it uh, uh, possible to de deploy uh, embedded application in a cloud native way, in a cloud native way. So uh, you will package your, your container in a YAML file uh, describe all the dependencies and all the parts that are necessary to develop an, an application. And uh, Snapcraft will package it in a, in a Snap, which is a, a containerized uh, file, file system, and, and deploy, it, uh, deploy it to a device. It's very simple, similar to Docker containers, but with uh, the features of the classical Linux pa package management system. So it will be very, very easy to update. So that's one aspect. Uh, the other aspect will, will be uh, once you've created your, your snap in the, in the YAML file, the possibility to deploy it in a command in a, fl a fleet of device. So very, very easy, Snapcraft push, uh, release, uh, and uh, mention uh, the version, the name of the slab, and, and we push it to, to the, the whole fleet of device. So the other part is the update mechanism. So uh, Ubuntu Core will always keep uh, the versions of the, the system. So when a second version is pushed, the previous version will be kept. So not only the application code, but the data also, which is important, for machine learning applications, the data is continuously uh, collected. And in case of failure of the updates, uh, it will uh, roll back automatically to the previous version. Or in case of uh, online learning, if the model is not performing well, it will be easy to restore the, the other version uh, quite easily with a simple command. So, these are the stacks that are, I, I wanted to present you for starting with, with machine learning. It's all open source, all free. Uh, anybody can uh, experiment with them uh, and on, on any type of, of devices, even on the Raspberry Pi, even on, on a laptop.